Hi, it's James here at the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas, and uh, welcome to part two, the finale of the spatula, spatulator that I'm making. Um, for those of you who haven't seen, this is the copper blade that needs painting. We're going to do that, and I'm going to demonstrate it. And uh, this is what we did in the previous video, upsetting, splitting, and punching the stock. I had a hard time with the hole punching because my hold fast is down right now. I could have held the piece still with it and been able to punch a lot better. And I made a little bit of an error and started drawing this thing into a taper to make the hook bend without videoing it. So, And I had actually curled it over. So I unbent it out of respect for y'all so you can see this being done. And um, I'll have to remember which way I want to turn it. Back of the spatula. Needs to go that way. So let's heat this up. We'll start with this. Get the hook back on there so you can see it being done. And then we'll proceed with the peening. And uh, I'll show you the making of the third rivet. And uh, we're going to do a little offset. You know, and kind of get the attitude of a spatula. Um, anyway, let's take it one step at a time. Heat this up. Make the hanging end. See you in a minute. All right, she's warmed up. Let's start over the edge of the anvil. Kind of walk it back towards me. And I want to send it over to one side, so let me cool that tip so I don't curl it anymore. I'm just send it over this way. You know, kind of offset it to one side. Do a little more of that. I'm going to heat this back up just a second, and we're going to close this down. Hot enough. Hmm. Make sure it's straight enough. It is. So I got us a tea tiny little hook to hang it on a nail or uh, on a pot rack or wherever you so wish to hang this item. Let me cool that part off. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I'll hang neatly. Okay, for the next part of this, I'm going to make a copper rivet. I've decided to use copper. What I have here is I have a three-quarter inch piece of uh, number four solid copper electrical wire. It's a good, a good grade of copper as far as I'm concerned. I have this uh, unconventional tool that I've made some holes in to uh, do some pentels. Uh, the hole goes all the way through and like a monkey tool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it against the anvil and I'm going to peen it cold with a ball peen hammer. So we'll see you in a minute for that. Alright, ignore the charro bean juice on my anvil. I did grill earlier which my method for that is take the label off the can, stab a hole in it, and put it on the grill. Like it or not, that's how I heat up beans. Okay, I'm gonna use this first hole. I have a little depression that I have drilled in it, and uh, of course, it's a little bit, little bit sloppy on the rivet. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna place this piece of three quarter inch, number four copper in here. Keep it flat on the anvil. Let me try to orient it to where I can get a straight shot on it with the flat of the hammer. I see no need to heat this. Now I'm going to turn the peen around on it. Now this is an acorn shaped peen. It's not uh, round like a ball.
Now, the reason a monkey tool has a bottom in the hole is so the bottom of the rivet doesn't upset. I have a remedy for that. Little center punch. I'm going to ease it over the step and gently knock it out. Give it a little more room. Oop, there it is. And that's a suitable little rivet for what I'm doing here. Uh, I had made three steel rivets, but I thought to myself, I says, me. That's that much more that can rust. Uh, let's go copper on copper. It's bad enough we have a steel handle, which is kind of cool. So let's just put copper rivets on the copper blade. All right, now we're going to go for the peening. Uh, peening is a process by which the ball peen of the hammer is used to distress the metal and what it does by doing that is it actually makes it more rigid. It hardens the surface of metals such as steel. Uh, in the case of this copper sheet metal, I know copper to be a metal that work hardens and uh, the more I work on it, the more rigid it will become. So I'm going to use that process. It'll not only lend a little bit of beauty to the piece, but it will make it to where it doesn't do this. See? The beauty about using a copper spatulator is if it bends a little when you're using it, you can just take and flip it over, press it on the pan, and bend it back. And if it breaks, you make another one. So let's do the peeny. First, let me see what side is going to engage. Okay. My holes lined up and look. Okay, this is going to be the bottom. All right. I'm not going to peen from the bottom side yet. I'm start from the top side. being very gentle. Working from the outside in. Of course, it's distorting the piece a bit. I'm trying to spread my painting out evenly. Alright, so now I'm going to use the flatter to kind of knock that down. This is probably not heavy enough to be using the flatter with, but I've got more peening to do, so I don't see where that matters. And I'm trying not to hit it on the actual edge, but very close. And don't hit your finger. It won't feel good, I promise.
lot more rigid. I think it needs a little bit more done to it. Now there's our copper piece. It feels very, very much more stable. I could bend it, of course, because it's copper, but it feels as though it's usable as a spatula. So there's the painting. Here are our rivets, which will be installed cold. And uh, what we need to do now is we need to establish where this thing is going to fit where the bottom edge of the copper is going to fit against the piece here and I want to create a little offset the spatulas aren't just straight in general they have a little offset and they're set at an angle to where you can use them in a pan or on a griddle so we're going to do that next we'll see you in a minute alright when I made this thing I chiseled from one side and that created a little bevel here and here I want that to be the part you see and the flattest plane to be against the blade of the spatula. So I'm going to put the flattest plane up, I'm going to align the holes, and I'm going to mark where this copper ends when the holes are aligned with this piece of soapstone welder's chalk. Get my alignment just right. that corner kind of mark that you see I've got something I can see and uh, I will not be able to see that when it's hot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small chisel mark something just enough to where I can see it when it's hot so I have a random chisel from the rack here that still has an edge I'm going to come back to the edge of the mark and I'm going to put just a little indentation in it. I don't want to get too uh, aggressive with that, but I want to be able to find it. Alright, hopefully you can see the little chisel mark. We're going to heat this up, try to isolate the heat to this area, and uh, I'm going to set that down and try to, without distorting this, bend it up to about a, uh, oh, I guess a 10 or 15 degree angle, something about like that. Something about normal if you're holding a spatula at stove level and you're working with food. You see how that sits up? It needs to sit flat at a comfortable angle for your hand. And that varies depending on how you cook. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set that down and I'm going to uh, create a little curve 
I mean a little angle there that way you can handle the spatula more easily so we'll heat that up and we'll see you in a minute all right I'm gonna draw the piece out I can see my little chisel mark pretty plainly we'll go over the edge of the anvil where I still got a corner up to that mark and I'm going to kind of set that down I don't know if you can see I've created a little set down there kind of flatten everything up angle is almost where I want it. I'm going to adjust just a little bit. Make sure it's still flat. Now that's pretty natural. Let me check and make sure it's going to fit the piece. Really, those kind of adjustments need to be done before you make the holes in your copper piece. Yeah, that's going to fit fine. It fits fine with this side up. So I think that's going to be just perfect. Okay, I'm going to cool this down. The way I can show you a little better what I just did without burning the crap out of my hand. Okay. See the little set down. Um, because I marked where the blade ended. See the angle that I put on it? So if I hold that flat, it sticks up just a little bit. I would call that close to about a 15 degree angle. I don't know. Um, just guesstimating. It's not an exact science, it's an art. Now, I will show you something that kind of bugs me. You see the sharp corners on there? Now, bear in mind that the rivet head's larger than the hole, but we could stand to lose those sharp corners, so I'm going to take it over to the 1x30 sander and just kind of knock that off just a little bit. You could do it with a file, a rasp, um, but if you got a tool, use it. So I'll see you in a minute, and I'll show you what I did to kind of make that a little nicer. See you in a minute. Alright. See, I've kind of taken the sharp corners off. And I did a little bit of uh, deburring here while I had the machine going. I mean, why not? Doesn't matter if this extreme edge is a little sharp because that's going to be mounted flat against the copper piece. So, now we've got to put everything to the test and uh, see if we can't get this nice. I'm going to clean the anvil off real good because the spatula is going to be face up on it with this over it and any rough painting done to the rivets will be done on the back. I want the face side of it to, to be the smoothest ideally because that's the side that's going to be touching your food. You don't want to tear your yolk out of your egg when you're trying to get it sunny side up or over easy. So. I'm going to clean the anvil up, see you in a minute. Alright, the anvil's been rubbed off real good. Nice and smooth. The side I want up. So let's invert that. We'll load the cylinders here. Get our copper to go through there if we can. Glad that it's snugger than I thought it would be. Right. I've got them all sticking through there. Let's see if we can get them through these holes. Hmm. Get a little worrisome. Trying to be anyway. Let's 
use a smaller hammer. A little one and a half pound. See if we can't get them through there. Alright, we're going to start with this one here towards the back. proceed with this one that wants to be crooked. Up, oh, that rivet popped out. Go with this next one. I need to send this one home a little more. I don't like that little offset there. Let's see if I can try to correct that somehow. Take um, a chisel, not a sharp one. I'm going to get a dull one and I'm going to try to work around that one ear and get that sort of fit a little nicer. This one is nice and dulled. Not hitting it hard at all. this thing somewhere so I can work on it. I'm actually very happy with that. It's crude, but I meant it to be so. Um, I think I'll add a cold touch mark to the copper somewhere. Let's see. We'll do it on the back. Right about center mass there. Whoop. Ah. All right. Touch mark is in. Bent down. It's 
fairly rigid nothing split there's absolutely nothing loose about that take my glasses off all right well there you have it there's a thing to hang it up with set to the right angle it's been peened it's rigid if it bends, you just unbend it in the pan or on the griddle. No problems. Copper and steel spatula. And I think it's a little stronger instead of just having the single tab being Y-shaped like that. So that's all I got for this evening. Hope you enjoyed this. I am going to clean this up with a little salt and uh, white vinegar solution and uh, clean this up real good with uh, some steel wool and oil it with some cooking oil and present this to the missus for her new spatula. Till next time, bye.